people don't aren't very good at forecasting that. Even though everyone knows about the halving, nobody figures about liquidity. So they kind of take current market conditions and say, well, you know, if you re remove the supply, everything will be fine. But what actually happens is because liquidity comes into the markets, demand starts exploding at the same time as supply. And it always takes everybody by surprise. Now, it's not a one day event. It's not like suddenly you wake up on the 20th of April and Bitcoin's up, you know, 50%. It tends to kind of chop around that period because people are like, well, it's in the price. And then before you know it, by June, Bitcoin's at 85, 95,000, something like that. And then and then you're off to the races and then everyone's, there's more demand comes in. Because remember, we talked before that as price goes up, as number go up, more people get involved and there's less supply. So it right. starts to get really reflexive. So it kind of gets really squeezy and that goes on. For a period of time, you know, some usually about a year and a half uh, after the halving. Recently, Real Vision co-founder and CEO Raul Pal has shared his new Bitcoin forecasts and insights following the halving. If you've watched Raul Pal before, you know that the expert investor has held an extremely bullish outlook on Bitcoin over the years. For the upcoming halving, Pal predicts that Bitcoin's massive price action would not actually happen overnight. It would, instead, typically fluctuate in value before achieving a significant increase. He observes that with Bitcoin's every surge, more and more investors are keen on joining its growth, ultimately increasing its demand and decreasing its supply. With that, let's take a look at some clips of Raul Pal as he gives us his latest insights. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video, where Pal reveals why Bitcoin will surely reach greater heights. Thank you and enjoy. Ever feel like you're wasting your money on things that don't really matter? Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out on this 2025 bull run, educate yourself now. Don't spend $12.50 on junk. Educate yourself on how to be successful in crypto using our Crypto Cheat Guide. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Visit the website now in the link in the description for your exclusive copy. Start your journey to crypto success today. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Because Bitcoin is basically a share of a network. The more people who join the network, the more value goes up. So as the ETF brings people in, as people start fearing the governments and their deficits, they start looking for different solutions. One of the reasons gold has been rallying is the same. So what we're seeing is this was the most successful launch of any ETF in all history, which tells you it's not just an, an ETF. It's that the idea of Bitcoin itself is resonating with people. They kind of know they're getting screwed somewhere by the system. And this feels like a way of getting higher returns with more volatility, but it kind of saves them from what is going on. So let's assume that this is the largest ETF launch in history and a lot of newbies have come in. Well, it's happening at a magic time. The magic time is what's known as the Bitcoin halving. So new Bitcoin comes onto the market via miners, Bitcoin miners who undergo huge kind of mathematical calculations to produce a Bitcoin. There is a fixed number of Bitcoins that can be produced each year. So it's a competition to produce them. So you need a lot of computing power. And then every four years, the algorithm of Bitcoin itself halves the number. So if there were a hundred Bitcoin being produced by miners every day, whatever the number is right now, after April 20th, it goes to 50. So there's more people coming into the market, which is new demand and new supply is shrinking. So all the time, the only supply is really sellers of Bitcoin who hold Bitcoin right now. But Bitcoin is one of these weird assets where 80% of all holders just hoard it. Like you and I, we just don't do anything with it. We just hold it. And so there's really only 20% that's available for trading. So listen, what's going on is the same story that's been on for a while. We are in the crypto macro spring to summer transition. That is when liquidity starts coming into the system. It happens to co correspond with the US election cycle, because obviously politicians can't help but give out candy around election time. Yes, of course. It's also the Bitcoin halving time. So Bitcoin halving um, reduces the supply. And then there was the ETF. So basically, we've got a perfect setup of liquidity, 
plus new demand, yeah. plus reduced supply. There's bear markets in all assets, and this is just an asset. And it's a very reflexive asset, so it tends to over-exaggerate the moves. But the, there is a good question within that, is the severity of the downside markets, that in Bitcoin were classically 80%-ish, last one was 65, so it was less than others. Is that changed because of the ETF? Well, obviously, many of the ETF holders faced with their first round of volatility in the space will panic out, much like everybody else, but that's fine. But I think there's going to be a bunch of the millennial cohort who are going to put it in their 401k. And that's every two week buying regardless. So my guess is that it'll dampen the volatility to the downside. So next time around, it won't be down 85, it won't be down 75, it won't be down 65, but maybe it's down 45, 50. I mean, I continue to be very bullish this year and very bullish for most of next year. People don't aren't very good at forecasting now. Even though everyone knows about the halving, nobody figures about liquidity. So they kind of take current market conditions and say, well, you know, if you re remove the supply, everything will be fine. But what actually happens is because liquidity comes into the markets, demand starts exploding at the same time as supply. And it always takes everybody by surprise. Now, it's not a one day event. It's not like suddenly you wake up on the 20th of April and Bitcoin's up, you know, 50 percent. It tends to kind of chop around that period because people are like, well, it's in the price. And then before you know it, by June, Bitcoin's at 85, 95,000, something like that. And then and then you're off to the races and then everyone's there's more demand comes in. Because remember, we talked before that as price goes up, as number go up, more people get involved and there's less supply. So it right. starts to get really reflexive. So it kind of gets really squeezy and that goes on for a period of time, you know, some usually about a year and a half uh, after the halving. As Powell stated, people overlook one of the most important factors driving Bitcoin's massive value, and that is liquidity. Whenever more liquidity enters the market, demand increases due to the observable price movements. And now, with the upcoming halving, Bitcoin's supply would typically decrease over time. According to Powell, Bitcoin is undergoing a demand shock due to the tremendous success of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. After the halving, the crypto asset would then undergo a supply shock. Powell believes that this combination is bound to skyrocket Bitcoin's value into new heights. Let us now return to Raul Pell's interview as he explains why Bitcoin is superior to all other assets and is positioned for tremendous success. Every single asset on earth versus Bitcoin since 2012 is down 99.9%. None of us expected $10 billion of demand in six weeks or whatever stupid okay. number it was, right? Okay. It was, I it. we kind of thought it might do it in a year because that's what gold did, the G, uh, GLD in its first year. But it did it in record short amount of time, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. So, no, it wasn't priced in. We didn't realize how many ordinary people, RAAs and investors, are starting to realize this issue that you're talking about is I need something to protect me, protect my wealth into the future and maybe make me money, not just protect my savings, but I want to make some money too. And this does that. As it says, you know, if you hold Bitcoin over a few years, you can buy something like five times as much S&P 500 just in a few years. So your purchasing power is going up dramatically every year you own it. And that even takes into account the fact that it goes down every four years a significant amount over the long run doesn't really matter. Think of why most people have bought gold. It's to protect themselves from the action of central banks. It has proven itself over several thousand years to be a way of having a store of value. Bitcoin is that for a digital age. Okay, most people know that story. They don't understand the other side of the story. Is why does nobody feel as wealthy as they thought they should be? You know, particularly if you're a bit older, you're like, why are my savings not as much as I thought they would be? Or I can't afford as much, right? That's the big conundrum. And the fact is, is that particularly since 2008, when we broke the world because of debt, we have been using the printing of money to try to paper over the cracks because economic growth from an aging population is slower. We don't have much productivity because people are retiring. And we've got too much debt, so people have to service the debt. 
So the central banks have been doing a bit of magic, which is printing of money. At one point, it was called quantitative easing. Now they don't do that as much anymore because everyone knows that game because that's the money printer go burr. So what they do is they inject liquidity into the system whether through all these weird things you hear about, like reverse repo markets, stuff like that. Basically, it's to hide the printing of money, put it into the system. When you look at that on a globalized level, because everybody's doing it, you're debasing the level of fiat currency. And what that means is your dollar today buys you less assets tomorrow. Now, why do we buy assets? We buy assets to save money for future consumption. So if I were to buy gold today, it's because I want to release it in future and I want its purchasing power protected for it to go up. Now, when you look at what's happening with, with the debasement of currency, they're debasing currency by about 8% on year on average amongst all the global central banks. Add in about 3 to 4% global inflation, you have 12% hurdle rate on your assets before you actually make any money. So your savings you need to be making eight, um, 12%. Now, over the last, since 2012, the S&P 500 has made 12% annualized. The NASDAQ has made about 24% annualized. So tech stocks have helped. But crypto is the one that really offsets this and allows you to generate a lot of wealth. So if you're in your 50s like me, or your 60s, and you're thinking, I just don't know if my retirement savings are enough, then a small allocation to an asset that does 150% a year will compound massively and will help you in having purchasing power in your retirement because nobody wants to be broke when they're 85 years old. That's everybody's biggest fear. For many years, Bitcoin has been seen to plunge during Asia trading hours, but that trend has dramatically changed soon after the launch of spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds. Since the spot Bitcoin ETFs have been launched, most of the daily gains on record for Bitcoin are coming during non-United States trading hours. It is, as for most of the analysts, a very unusual reversal of trends from the past, where previous gains had been mostly concentrated during US trading hours. Marcus Thielen, who founded 10x Research, is convinced that this new trend will ultimately offer investors a way to profit from the small margins of profit that are more often made. According to Thielen, traders can use this information to buy Bitcoin ahead of the US trading hours and sell a few hours later. The surge was as much as 2.6% outside US hours against a meager 0.6% during US hours. Meanwhile, Eric Balkunas, an ETF analyst from Bloomberg, also pointed out that most of the rally, in fact, more than 40%, for Bitcoin has come since the launch of spot Bitcoin ETFs, outside of US regular market trading hours. Thielen further explained that investors, including those in different time zones, often anticipate surges in ETF inflows by purchasing Bitcoin prior to the market open. As per their analysis, Bitcoin tends to rise in the 1 to 4 hours preceding the day's US ETF starting trading, indicating likely front-running of the ETF flow. Although the last 7 days saw the price of Bitcoin swinging between $64,940 and $71,256, Thielen points out to the fact that US investors often take advantage of the market spread between the spot and futures markets. Thielen expands by stating that the buying flow during US trading hours appears mostly arbitrage buying Bitcoin spot ETFs but selling CME-listed Bitcoin futures as hedge funds pocket the futures premium. So, what are the price actions that you think Bitcoin will likely present in the months ahead after the next halving, considering all the above by Raul Pal and others? Please let us know down below. If you find this video pretty enlightening, then make sure that you stay ahead with our many insights and updates on the crypto and global financial world. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell to make sure you get notified when we post new content. And until next time, remember to question, keep searching, and most importantly, keep investing wisely. Thank you for watching.